A large part of raising animals for meat is getting them to butcher weight without it costing you a fortune. It is entirely possible to raise rabbits without using pellets. In this video, I'm gonna outline a few different options for feed that you can use that don't include commercial pellets. Pellets do have their place. They are perfectly formulated for raising rabbits. They come with a set amount of protein and set number of minerals. They are, however, not the cheapest option and it can be really hard to find organic ones. And at the end of this video, I'll let you know two different feed options that we've used with great success. One of the biggest criteria for raising meat rabbits successfully is to have a high protein content, especially for the grow outs. They need a protein level of at least 15%. The closer to 20% that you can get, the better. It is worthy of noting, if you're planning on transitioning from pellets to different feed, you need to make sure that you do it slowly and give time for their gut to adjust. If you swap over too quickly, it can shock their gut and you can get an overgrowth of the wrong bacteria and you can end up with very sick or dead bunnies. To get a high protein feed that doesn't include pellets with weird ingredients in them, you need to be including some kind of legume or grain. Common options are whole oats or crushed oats, whole or crushed barley, field peas, which can either be whole, crushed or soaked. Ours really like them soaked and sprouted. And in winter, it's a great idea to add what's known as black oil sunflower seeds or BOSS for short. These obviously have extra calories in them because they've got the oil in them. So they help the bunnies keep their weight on when the weather is so cold. Alfalfa, also known as lucerne where we live, is the perfect food. It is high in protein, it's relatively cheap to get hold of, and most really good quality pellets are actually alfalfa based. So if you read somewhere that it says that adult rabbits shouldn't be fed alfalfa hay, I would say that that's complete nonsense. The reality is that most good quality pellets are actually alfalfa based, and your rabbits can eat alfalfa hay. The trick is to make sure it's not their entire complete diet if they are not pregnant breastfeeding or fast growing young juveniles. This is because it has too much protein and too much calcium in it if they are not actively growing and the calcium, too much of that can cause urine problems. And the high protein isn't a problem for anything other than the fact that it will make them too fat. There's too many calories in it and a fat bunny cannot breed. So it's really important to also make sure they always have some meadow hay or some timothy hay, a good quality hay. These have the really long fibers in them that the guts need to stay healthy and also a mineral source, a Himalayan salt or some kind of salt lick that they can access as well. And then of course you want to add some forage. Pretty much any greens out of your garden are perfectly safe for a rabbit. If you would eat them yourself, then they're usually safe for a bunny. So don't give them things like tomato greens or potato greens or any other kind of nightshade green or rhubarb leaves. You wouldn't eat them yourself, don't feed them to the bunny. Carrot tops are perfectly fine. You want to limit those sweeter, starchier foods, which includes carrots themselves, apples, strawberries, and the fruit of tomatoes. They're a great little treat but not something they should have too often. Of course, you can also forage lots of things out of your backyard, lots of grass. Most weeds that you could feed chickens can also be fed to rabbits. Avoid feeding them things like buttercup, also known as ranunculus, ragwort, hemlock, foxglove. They're all quite toxic to bunnies. And the two things we've had really good success with growing our grow outs on is either lucerne, also known as alfalfa, or tree lucerne, which I will put the scientific name down below. It's known by a couple of scientific names and not everybody knows it as Tegasaste, which is what I know it as. And the other is barley fodder. If you can grow barley fodder, day seven, it is about 20% protein, which is a fantastic number to be raising grow outs on. And you can feed it with the leaf and the grain and the roots all at once. If you don't know about barley fodder, it's very, very easy to make fodder from any grain or seed. All you need to do is soak it for 24 hours and then give it a good drain, spread it out on a tray and mist it a couple times a day. And those sprouts are what fodder is. It's what we would call microgreens, but you can feed the entire thing. You don't have to clip it. So you can just cut the root mat 
and just throw the whole thing to the bunnies and they'll eat the whole lot. If you have non-breeding adult rabbits, they can be raised solely on grass in your backyard and some good quality hay and obviously some fresh water. Rabbits must always have access to fresh water, especially if it is really hot. I'll put a link down below to a blog post that I have written that has a huge list of different foods that you can and cannot feed your bunnies. So it's worth checking on that list if you're not sure about a particular food. And if you're interested in a more natural way of raising bunnies you might find this video quite interesting about whether or not you should cage raise or maybe look at raising them in a colony. Thanks for joining me I'll see you in the next one.